Hello, everyone. Hello. My name is Dimitri. I'm an addict. <laughs> <laughs> I'm addicted to communication. Hi. I don't actually want to be up here right now. I'm really nervous. I'm extremely nervous. I think being in leadership roles is extremely challenging. I've created a community. It's been one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. And a lot of what you see here is based around what I learned creating a community. It also comes from being a software architect and seeing how creating systems, if you don't keep it simple, you're in for a shitload of work later on. So this is about how to keep it simple, how to create communities, how to do it quickly. And so presenting Conexus, Yeah, there we go. You know, we're in pretty fucking rough ride, to be honest. If, if anyone here is questioning that, like, we don't, I don't know why you're here, but, but. So let's get past this, knowing that it's pretty fucked. But I think the bigger problem is the fact of how many people are living without a sense of purpose? How many people just exist, right? Like, what is that? We can address that, though. We can ignite people's passion. Now, I know this, this is a lot about eco-villages here. I love eco-villages. I want to live in a nature sanctuary one day, right? I want to be there with people. I want to have my kids in the same place. That's great. But realistically, the lead times of eco-villages, way longer than anyone thinks. They're also extremely difficult to navigate socially that many people all coming to group debate decisions, and it's a wide point of failure, right? You put all this work into creating an eco-village, it can fall apart pretty quick. And honestly, the track record isn't great. I wish it was different. There are communities out there, Finhorn, uh, you know, uh, but they're not actually replicable. They haven't been able to replicate those models. So, and also like Tamara, for example, I love that concept. And COVID comes and they're having to beg people for donations because they didn't have the economic systems in place, right? To stay open, they have to beg for donations. So it's pretty, unfortunately, it's really rough, okay? So the idea with Conexus is we're trying to create communities as quickly as possible by taking existing resources, which is single family homes, we're focusing on specific regions, specific neighborhoods, and we're matching up the people in the homes. Because good luck trying to get carnivores and vegans living in the same home. It's so much easier to get people matched up with their pod, their, their group. It's a co-op style network, and we're focusing on the greater Denver area and that's like two hours, like that's all the way out to like Lions. You know, we're not just focusing on one area, but we do need to focus on somewhere first before expanding. We need to saturate. And the biggest aspect of this, because you just put people together in a community, if there's not a sense shared a purpose, you're not going to have cohesion. You're going to have pettiness. Okay? It just I, I've seen it happen and it sucks to be mired in that. But if you have something, if you have an economic engine through social enterprise, you can get people to focus all their efforts on that. That helps them to work through their issues because they see themselves as vessels for creation. So the social enterprise incubator is a huge aspect of this. We need a lot more conscious businesses. Think about how many people you saw on your flight over here. Majority of those people are going to lose their jobs in the next 10 years due to automation, okay? If we can create more evergreen businesses, we can get a lot more people to actually live with purpose on a daily basis, show up for each other, and support the, the kind of community life that they know is possible, but they don't know how to get there. So our twist is creating an inflation-proof model. We're using a cooperative model where one share always equals one day of care. And it's a fully inclusive model. 
So we have multiple tiers to satisfy if someone's like, hey, you know, five grand a month is easy for me to live fully inclusive and I wanna have a Tesla, sure. Other people might wanna live at half that. So there's multiple levels. Initially, we're only doing two, to keep it simple. And the biggest aspect in communities is chores. So in our community, you're not required to do anything. You can earn shares, though, by doing work in the community, right? So it's incentivizing instead of penalizing. And the biggest aspect is to get those services the community needs to be done professionally by incubating those businesses. So fully inclusive model, right? That sounds nice, that sounds like a novelty thing, but it's actually necessary. Because if you have a community and people are still buying their own groceries, they sell their own cars, they're using the same amount of resources that they always have. They're just living in a nicer place and more connected. But when they're paying one fee, they get the car, they get the, the, the food sharing, and we get to make the systems that make it so much easier. So instead of you going to the store and having to face all these choices, what are you gonna buy and you make the right choice, it's all done for you. We're making those agreements with the farmers we're focusing on that aspect of permaculture is what can we grow in our little place, but who can we partner with to get everything we need for our network of communities? And the biggest aspect too is if you're an entrepreneur, think of how much time you're gonna save cooking, cleaning, having to take your car in for maintenance, if these things are all done for you. <clears throat> but the biggest aspect is being able to provide professional mediation and therapy service. Communities tend to draw, thank you, communities tend to draw wounded people. And that's, that's just been my experience, right? If we don't provide these kind of services, you're just gonna be struggling with those issues in there. People are gonna think, oh, well, we can you know, work through it, but you need professionals for this. We're trying to keep the cost for one share as $80. And that's inflation proof, right? So if you had you know, $5,000 right now, you can invest that and you know how long you're set for. So that puts us at 2,500 a month for a fully inclusive tier one lifestyle. But because you can earn shares by doing tasks in the community that have to be done anyways, like the cleaning and the shared meals, you can get half, up to half of each month off, okay? And certain, if you have a property right now that's large enough, it has to be you know, at least an acre, at least 2,500 square feet home. We can, you can exchange whatever equity you have in that to come into the network, so you have shares. So essentially it's like if that was your only asset, you can exchange it and live in this kind of community. And then we also have little discounts and surcharges like, hey, if you're a couple sharing a room, you know, that's a thousand off. If you've got pets, that's gonna be another one to two shares a month because of the work that adds. So, Tiers, just two for now. Initial, and then we're gonna keep going up. It essentially doubles, right? So right now it's 2,500 or 5,000 and then 10,000. We'll see if we go from that, if there's needs. Governance, trying to keep it simple with just four levels of voting power based on how much you've been participating. It's not about how much money you put in. It's about how long you've been there, how long you've been participating. There is a minimal number of shares required to vote though, but remember you can earn those shares by doing things in the community, okay? And there's a one year probation period for new people coming in. We're gonna utilize Web3 tools for transparency and efficiency, but we're not, you know, we're not calling ourselves a DAO. The biggest aspect of community is the web vetting process. You really have to be careful who you let in. Thank you. And this is where the social enterprise incubator is extremely important. If we have people coming in and working as employees first, we really got pre vetted for it. And with this model, we're trying to address the biggest pitfalls of communities. So we're giving them guardrails, but we're allowing them to create their own, they could create stricter guardrails, essentially. And the Goldilocks way is our, you know, our matching. Right? The more people we have coming in, the better we can match them to homes. So a new home opens up, people who really enjoy living, uh, who might want to live with each other based on how they buy, they get to move in right there first. And our regenerative goals, 100% renewable energy used, that's easy, zero waste, a little harder, uh, majority of the food produced locally, and then high level collaboration to reduce resource consumption. 
by 50%. And then 90% of the water is recycled. And this is an impact investment. We are offering 10% annual yields uh, for accredited investors. And we think that this is actually gonna address quite a few things, housing, employment, environment, mental health, elder care, and education. We can get into those more, but I'm running out of time. So, um, session writing, we hope that this is the kind of model that works best in a recession when there's homes that are coming on the market really cheap. And our philosophy is keep it simple, iterate like a startup, don't reinvent the wheel, and then nodes in a cluster provide the highest level of resilience, and that self-actualization is the ultimate level of success. So, thank you. Woo! <laughs>